Okay, so GPT 4.5 is finally here. We've been waiting for this for a long time, and I've got to say that I am pretty underwhelmed. So in this video, I'm going to go through a little bit about the model. I'm going to actually tell you how I think that this model was originally supposed to be the GPT 5 model last year, and that how perhaps in another alternate universe, this model came out and was actually better than what people think here. But first, let's jump into the actual blog post that they've released. Very quickly, it's almost like they're being apologetic in this, and they're trying to basically re-explain to us that there are two ways to do scaling now in LLMs, and that while the new cool way is scaling up test time compute or the sort of reasoning approaches, that the other way, which we've known for a long time, was that basically you just scale up the number of tokens that you train on, the size of your model, the size of your data set, et cetera. They're claiming that this model is much bigger and that perhaps this is model is their biggest model to date that they have released. But it's almost like from the outset that they don't want us comparing this to the O1 and O3 models. And this is where I kind of feel this model really is an also ran model. What I suspect has happened and I've heard from people who were testers on the 4.0 models, is originally their plan was to call that GPT 4.5. And that the base model that they were training early last year, which I think is this model, was going to be GPT 5. But if we remember back, Sam Altman himself said that we would see a big increase from GPT 4 to GPT 5, just like we had from GPT 3 to GPT 4. Now that hasn't come with just scaling up the model alone. We've seen over the past year, and especially over the last six months, that really all the interesting stuff is happening now with scaling out the test time compute, longer chains of thought, and building these thinking slash reasoning models. And yet OpenAI has gone back to releasing that big model that they put all their money into as GPT 4.5. Now, what do we get that's better with this model as opposed to the other ones? Well, it seems that the biggest sort of factors that people are sort of talking about at OpenAI is that, well, this feels more natural. So perhaps it's got some sort of better alignment in actually being able to produce out stuff that people want without perhaps too much censorship, that kind of thing. People also talking about it being more conversational, right? And I definitely noticed that, yes, it does get to the point quicker and is a lot less verbose than some of the open AI models in the past. In some ways, you could say it's more like a Claude model, right? Where it's basically not going to try and give you lots of fluffy language, but it's going to try and give you what it is that you've asked for in a very simple sort of way. Now, the fact that the model is bigger, they're claiming it has a lot more sort of facts and stuff like that. And that's kind of shown with the MMLU task in here. But what I want to show you is that if we actually start comparing benchmarks, we see that this model is actually behind a lot of models that are out there. So what I did was take a screenshot from this and a screenshot from a number of the recent papers that have been released, threw them into Claude and said, make me an interactive benchmark comparison here. And just to be sure, I've done a quick check myself to see that, okay, is it getting the numbers right? And I think it is. So if we look at this here, we can see that even on things like MMLU, this 4.5, while it's kind of good compared to the 4.0 and stuff like that, it's still below DeepSeek V3, which is not a reasoning model, right? That was their standard pre-training and post-training model before the R1 and the one that they actually published the figures where it costs $5.5 million. Now, based on the fact that most of the labs, their final costs tends to be 2x to 4x what that last big run actually was, we could imagine that it maybe cost them somewhere in the range of sort of 20 to $30 million to do that. But my guess is that GPT 4.5 has cost quite a lot more money than that. And we can see that even when we're looking at a benchmark like this, which really shouldn't be heavily influenced by the reasoning or test time compute too much, we do find that actually these reasoning models do much better than the GPT 4.5 in here. If we jump in and look at the Sri Bench Verified, 
we can see that GPT 4.5 is way behind here. It's behind DeepSeek V3. It's behind DeepSeek R1. It's even behind the old Claude Sonnet for this, let alone the sort of newer models like OpenAI's own O3 Mini and the new Claude 3.7, etc. And if you come in and look at the mathematics stuff, we can see that, again, this model really is not for this. So this sort of begs the question, what's up with this model? It's kind of ironic that none of the main researchers decided to appear in the video for promoting this, that we've got a former DeepMind researcher and some others talking about what actually makes this good. So there is this alternate universe where the reasoning kind of models were never created. And in that universe, yes, GPT 4.5, I suspect would have been GPT 5 and would have been slightly better. Although this wasn't good enough to actually get that title. Okay. So another thing that reinforces just how old this model is, is if we come in and look at the knowledge cutoff for this model, this is October, 2023, to give you context, the Claude 3.7 is October 2024, a whole year later. Now, I could buy it if we were sort of looking at something middle of 2024 or something like that. But I suggest that this model has been sitting around for quite a long time. Another thing that we would have loved to have seen that lots of people are asking for is longer max output tokens. Yet, when we look at 4.5, we see that it's 16,000, just like it is with GPT 4.0 and 4o mini. Compare that to the newer reasoning models where you're looking at sort of 100,000 tokens out, 65,000 tokens out, etc. Now, of course, they contain reasoning tokens in there in that max output that we don't actually get to see, but I do think that this shows that this model has been sitting around for quite a while while people were deciding whether to basically release this or not. But never mind, if you come and look at Twitter, you will see people singing the praises of this model. But one of the things that I've noticed when I look at this, generally people are just comparing it to 4.0. And it clearly is a better model than 4.0. There's no one denying that fact. The fact that, yes, this probably is better at structured output than 4.0. And yes, that maybe this is even better at function calling than 4.0. And that's a great thing. But that's coming at a huge price. So when we come in here and look at 4.0, 4.0 is actually very reasonable now at sort of $2.50 for a million tokens in, $10 for a million tokens out. Compare that to 4.5, we've got $75 for a million tokens in. That's 30 times more than 4.0 and $150 for a million tokens out, 15 times more than 4.0. So you've got to think, and I haven't even started comparing to 4.0 mini here, which is 15 cents for a million tokens in, 60 cents for a million tokens out, which don't get me wrong, that model is awesome for many uses. I look at this pricing and I got to ask myself, okay, who is going to actually use this model at this pricing? You're basically getting a sub tier deep seek V3 kind of model for 20 to 30 X the price of what you're going to pay for other models that are like it. Now, I strongly suspect that within a couple of weeks, we're going to see a huge price cut and they're going to say, oh, we've got our GPUs and therefore we can now actually reduce the price, etc." This is the price for people going out and benchmarking this model and playing around with this model. I suspect that a lot of people who've been trying this out are actually not paying for the tokens or getting a heavily subsidized rate on their tokens as they go through. Now, it is a clear fact that the non-reasoning models tend to basically produce nicer prose output and creative writing output. And therefore, because this model is actually a lot bigger than 4.0, it's actually producing that creative writing and that prose output at a higher standard than 4.0 and then probably a lot of the other models that are out there. So I'm not saying that this model is not good for anything. In fact, it's actually quite good for a lot of things if the price was on par with 4.0. If this was a replacement for 4.0, then I feel that this would be actually be a very different story and would be a good solid release that people could just swap out their use of 4.0 for this model.
So it's kind of ironic that while OpenAI is basically talking all about this scaling up of unsupervised training in here, their model's consistently getting beat by Grok3 beta, which seems to have done even better at basically scaling that up. Now, I don't know exactly how many GPUs this is trained on. They talk about that they're scaling up and preparing to train even larger models on their cluster of 200,000 GPUs. So you've got to wonder, is OpenAI even not winning at the scaling game for pre-training in here? And one of the things that when I watched the video, I got really kind of excited about, which I do think actually is really interesting in here, is this whole point of where they basically talk about how they did a bunch of new systems work. And to give some examples, we aggressively used low precision training to get the most out of our GPUs. Now, this is something that a lot of us are really interested in, in can you do training well with quantized models? Can you make training more efficient for all this? And so sure enough, here in the video, they're talking about that, yes, we did this with this, and they talk about new pre-training and new post-training and stuff like that. But when you come across to the actual OpenAI GPT 4.5 system card, which you've got to think is at least going to mention the low precision thing, right? So I come in here and there's nothing. There's no talk about the low precision training. There's no real sort of outline over what they did differently in post-training this time. Even though they've claimed that they've learned all these lessons and done all this sort of stuff, there's really nothing in here. Not even a set of outstanding benchmarks this time. So that led me to actually playing around with the model. And one of the things that I realized is that supposedly you're supposed to use a new system prompt for this. One of the OpenAI team has actually published that on Twitter. And in my experiments, it yes, that it did seem to make a difference by using this. And if you are interested in the system prompt for ChatGPT 4.5, come and check out Pliny the Liberator, who's well known for doing jailbreaks and has already jailbroken this so that we can see that sure enough, the cutoff date is 2023-10. We can see to the current date, some interesting stuff about bio tools and can more tools and some other things in there. But it's kind of interesting just to see, okay, what they're putting in their system prompt. But when I come back to my tests for trying this out, the most frustrating thing is that, yes, you get some nicer output from this model. I'm not denying that, right? You get less verbosity. You get more of just sort of getting to the point and giving you some interesting kind of points in here. If we compare this one with, say, the 4.0 model. But look at this. This took like one minute, 10 seconds to generate. Now, I'm sure normally this is because the first day they're quite slow. They're spinning up the inference and all of this. But when we compare this to 4.0, this was 13 seconds. Compare the same thing to 4.0 mini and you're down to sort of six and a half seconds. You've got to wonder, where am I going to use this model if it's so slow that it's just not practical for the everyday kind of model use. I've got the reasoning models, which O3 Mini, 3.7 Sonnet, DeepSeq R1, all of these are actually really good at being able to do a lot of these deep reasoning kind of tasks. What we really want is a good, fast, general model with perhaps more knowledge in it, and we would like that knowledge to be more up to date. Unfortunately, GPT 4.5 is not that model. So it will be interesting to see as they roll this out to everyone on ChatGPT and they get the speed up and things like that, does it become more of a useful model for those things? Are the sort of structured outputs and function calling just that much better that suddenly make it being worth all of that extra money? I suspect not, but I would love to hear from you guys. What's your thought about it? Are you prepared to pay $150 per million tokens out for something that's only marginally better than the other models on their platform and perhaps not even better than models on other platforms. I love to hear what you think. Let me know in the comments and let me know if you are going to use this, what are you actually going to use this for? Anyway, as always, if you found the video informative, please click like and subscribe and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.